This video is brought to you by my new product, understandatc.com. Learn radio communications from the inside out, from taxi, takeoff to landing, and even those lengthy IFR clearances and en route communications. Visit understandatc.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com. It's finally time to come in and land on our ATC boot camp we've been doing. We're gonna come in and I'm gonna show you a class delta arrival as we pick up the ATIS in the air. And then I'm gonna show you how we contact tower, the power of cold calling, after we land, how to contact ground and take you all the way to shutdown. A true class delta towered arrival. Let's go ahead and cut to that clip. All right, guys, up in the cockpit now, a class Delta arrival is what I'm going to show you guys. And first things first, we're going to listen to the ATIS, just like we started our previous one. So let's grab the current weather. Two tree, altimeter tree zero zero two, visual approach is in use, runway tree six. Advise on the initial contact you have, India. India. This is Ocala Tower with ATIS information, India, time one seven five zero, Zulu wind three six zero at eight, visibility one zero. Sky condition 1,900 scattered, temperature 28, dew point 2 tree, altimeter tree 002, visual approach is in use, runway tree 6, advise on the initial contact you have, India. All right, so I'm advised we have information, India. I'm going to first and foremost give him a cold call, and then I'm going to let him know we're roughly, what, about 9, almost 10 miles out from the field. We're actually to the south. Uh, of the field is what we're going to report to him. So let's go ahead and let's uh, give him that call. Ocala Tower, Skyhawk 7159 or Quebec. Skyhawk 5179 or Quebec, Tower. Yes, sir, information uh, India, we're about nine miles due south for a full stop. 79 or Quebec, Roger, continue straight in, report a three mile final. Straight in, call you a three mile final, 7159 Quebec. All right, looking good. So we're going to continue a straight in for runway 36. I'm going to report to him uh, when we're three miles out. Sounds great. So we're looking good. Everything's set. Knock out a before land checklist nice and early. Again, I like to call a delta roughly 10 mile, 8 to 10 miles out is when I typically like to call a delta airport like that. Um, gives them plenty of notice that we're coming. Now remember that their, their sphere of influence, their airspace is usually uh, about four nautical miles. So you're calling them well outside their airspace, let them know you're coming. A Charlie Airport, of course, needs, a, needs you to call them a whole lot earlier. In fact, a Charlie Airport, you should really be on VFR flight following because you're contacting approach before you even get in there and have an opportunity to talk to tower. You can't just straight up call a Charlie tower and say, here I am. See what I'm saying there? You got to talk to approach and work your way through the system. So I've got us right now on a nice long straight in for a runway 36. So what we'll do is I'm going to keep flying this. Uh, and when we get to about uh, three miles, we're only going 172 speeds, uh, we'll catch up and uh, I'll show you that radio call as we take it all the way into the landing. All right, guys, so we're getting a little bit uh, closer to our point now, but I wanted to kind of go back and reiterate what just happened. Remember, we cold call. We got his attention first. I had to let him know where I, who I was. Then I listened to the ATIS. I spent the time listening to that ATIS. Where I was and what did I want to do? It, well, it was easy. I was, you know, about nine miles due south of the field. Nice and easy. What do I want to do? Inbound for a full stop. It's important to let him know that. Inbound for touch and goes. In, inbound for the option. Let him know what you want to do so he can plan for it. A lot of these class Delta airports get so busy with training aircraft, it's important to know that you want to do touch and goes or you want to do a full stop. All right, so it's important to emphasize that. So we're kind of coming up. Uh, getting closer to our three miles, we're about 3.8. Uh, I'm a big fan of calling early. I know you said three miles, but I'm going to call him a little bit early uh, so he can get a heads up, start spotting us. We're all lit up. The whole land checklist is good. He should be able to find the say okay. And I'm going to tell him exactly what he asked us to report, three miles. And Ocala Tower, Scott, 715, back Quebec, uh, three miles straight at 36. 759, Quebec, clear to land, runway 36. Clear to land, runway 36, thank you. 715, back Quebec. All right, perfect. So I reported that we are a three-mile straight in for runway 36, just like he asked us to do. 
Uh, could I technically just said, fine, I go back three miles? Yeah, I could have, but I like to reiterate sometimes I'm a straight in for 3-6, especially at the Ocala Airport because we don't have a radar here, believe it or not. So uh, it's a visual tower. He's got the binoculars out. He's checking us out as to where we are and what we're doing. So he also gave me those magic words that I wanted to hear so bad. Clear to land. That's important. I'm going to go ahead and knock out, uh, dump in some flaps here and everything else on my nice straight in approach. Um, he told me I was clear to land. And those are the magic words I want to hear. And anybody who's done any amount of class Delta airport flying knows that, well, sometimes it's not until short, short final that they actually clear you to land. Or sometimes you're on short final and you're thinking to yourself, they clear me to land? That's why it's important to maybe take some notes or re and remember that, yes, they did clear me to land. I, and if you don't know, it's always good to ask. Let me show you another cool trick. It's kind of a windy day today, so I'm going to ask for what's called uh, a wind check. Wind check, please. Wind 020 at 7. Thank you. So all I do is ask for a wind check. Zero, two, zero at seven. So now here I am on short final. I listen to the ATIS. The winds were one thing back there. I get up to the runway. I get the most current and most accurate wind straight. The control is reading it straight from the computer. So now I can know what the winds are doing. Okay, the winds are from zero to zero. So I'm looking going, okay, I see how the winds are kind of, you know, hitting me now. That's why I'm getting blown up this way. I got a little bit of a, of a right cross from coming in. You can always ask for a wind check kind of a cool thing to uh, uh, to know and know that you can ask for. I looked out, the wind socket's showing the exact same thing. We're coming in. Uh, everything's looking good. Airspeed is exactly where I want it. Looking good. Aiming for uh, just a little bit, uh, right, those numbers, 3-6. Coming in, coming in, holding it off, holding it off, and there's those numbers, 3-6. And we're letting it roll on out, keeping it straight, and listen up, because here, something else cool is going to happen. Let's see what uh, happens here. Like just continue down the runway right through an Alpha 3, monitor ground point four into the ramp. Okay, all the way down the runway to Alpha 3, and we'll monitor ground point four seven one five 715, Quebec, thank you. All right, so something really neat happened there. So what he told us to do first off, again, not very busy today, he told us to continue all the way down the runway for Alpha 3, which is very helpful. My hangar is literally all the way at the end, other end of the runway. Uh, he knows that, I guess. And is letting us roll all the way down, kind of like a high-speed taxi right now. Now he told me to get off on Alpha 3 to the ramp, which is the ramp that's going to take me to my hangar. And then he said to monitor ground point 4. Here's your interesting fact for the day. Almost all ground frequencies are 121 point something. So when they tell me ground point 4, what he means is ground is 121 point 4. When they say ground point niner, ground is 121.9. So I'm going to get over to my 121.4 as soon as I'm off the runway here and I'm going to monitor ground. He didn't ask me to call ground. He didn't say contact ground. He said 7159 Quebec monitor ground. So Obviously, he's standing right next to the ground controller, or maybe on a slow afternoon like today, he is the ground controller as well. Here comes my Alpha 3. I'm going to go ahead and jump off. Um, so he told me to monitor ground. So once I get clear of this runway, I'm flipping over, and I am now monitoring ground. So all that is set. Clear right, clear left. Taking a brief stop here to clean up my airplane. Flaps up, carpet off. In my mixture. Transponder standby. Good. And continuing my taxi. Simply just monitoring ground. I don't have to contact anybody because they know where I'm going. They know what I'm doing. That's what they mean when they say monitor ground. So real neat stuff. Listen, maybe you guys have some questions about some radio communications you guys have received. Um, gosh, the, this video hopefully was helpful to you, teaching you some different things and showing you some different things. That's the thing about radio communications. It's always something different. And that's why I kind of want to showcase. It's tough to encompass everything in, in, into one video because there's so many different variables. So maybe you've had some things that have happened to you and a story you want to share with me. Leave me a comment down below this video on M0A.com. You know you get a response from me or one of our uh, wonderful team members here at M0A.com. So really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. If you struggle with radio communications, I encourage you to go to that under understandatc.com to really beef up on your radio communications, VFR and IFR. It helps you with all of that. It's going to be such a vital part of your flight train. So guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.